Change is human. It's big, it's small, it's fast, and it's slow. I think of it a bit like one of my favorite buildings in London, Big Ben. When you stand on the pavement next to Big Ben and you look up, it towers into the sky, it's huge. But as soon as you walk across Westminster Bridge, it contextualizes with this, the skyline and it sort of shrinks. If you were to take a helicopter over London, actually Big Ben's a bit of a baby in comparison to Canary Wharf and the Shard and even the Gherkin. And if you were to take a satellite image of London, it would be minuscule. When I think about all the change that's happened in my life from one generation of me growing up to my children now growing up, the change feels vast. If I take a simple thing like doing my homework around the kitchen table when I was a child, I would have sat with a pen and paper doing my homework at the kitchen table. The one and only television in our house was in the sitting room. I wasn't missing much from the kitchen because there were only three channels. The fourth channel, four, didn't come along until I was 12. And anyway, the TV sometimes had something called the test card. So for anyone younger than me, the test card happened when there was actually nothing on the TV. Difficult to imagine that there were times where it was not 24-7, 365. I didn't have a phone at the kitchen table because the one and only phone was in the hall. You had to actually sit on a funny kind of table chair thing because it was wired into the wall. So a telephone call was a telephone call. And besides, it was pretty cold in the hall. For some reason, the heating never made its way to the hall. And if I now watch my children sitting around my kitchen table doing their homework, they will not have a pen and paper because they will be using their laptop to upload their homework to the school portal. They will have their phone on the table, maybe even more than one of them, because they will be checking their Instagram. They will be receiving Snapchats and WhatsApping somebody else. They will have their tablets playing some music. And for some unknown reason, we also have to have the television on, blaring in the background, playing one of the zillions of channels that are available to them now. On top of this, there is one similarity to me and my childhood, which is they will be bickering as well, holding down a conversation, be it all fragmented, uh, and that will be going on on top of everything. So it feels like a vast change. Then why is it that I am my mother? And I don't mean a little bit my mother. I mean every day my mother. Pick up your feet, hang it up, put your hand over your mouth when you cough. What's the magic word? Sit up straight, don't drag your heels. Were you born in a barn? I am my mother. So what's the impact of this change yet no change on brands? I suspect if you go home tonight and look in your cupboards, your bathroom cabinets, your bedside tables, your fridges, you will find more brands that your parents enjoyed and your grandparents enjoyed than you might think. In fact, if I was to look at breakfast, I get up and have breakfast today the same as I did as a young person. As a young person, my cereal choices were completely influenced by a big furry honey monster and a tiger called Tony. And after cereal, we had toast. And my father was a lover and my father and my mother was a hater. Of course, I'm not talking about the state of their marriage. I am talking about Marmite. Uh, my mother would have drunk tea, Tetley's or PG tips, and my father, coffee, so Nescafe or Kenko. And today, at my breakfast table, no matter how much I want to reduce sugar in my household, because I know that to be a good thing now, uh, my children's tastes are influenced by a big furry honey monster and a tiger called Tony. I am still a lover, my husband Nav a hater, so we have spawned a mixture of two. I now drink tea, PG Tips and Tetley, my husband coffee, Kenko and Nescafe. You could say that breakfast just got off easy because it's untouched by the digital revolution. So let's look at a category like playing for our children. You can't tell me that we have not been touched there by the technical revolution. Uh, 
But if we are to believe that our children have to be completely plugged into uh, devices 24-7, then surely their bedrooms and playrooms would be completely void of a single toy. So why is it then that all over my house I tread on Lego? My house is as full of Lego today as my childhood house was. And I could go on. I brush my teeth with Colgate, I wash my dishes with Fairy, I wash my clothes with Ariel and Purcell. Uh, obviously, when it comes to chocolate, it's Cadbury's, but on Christmas Day, we have to have quality streets, and Toblerone is really for those special days. <laughs> so, <laughs> is it really the case that actually every brand that we knew and loved fits from one generation to the next? Actually, no, there are some gaps and there are some brands that are missing that haven't transitioned through the generations. They're harder to remember because, of course, they're, now longer no, they're no longer front of mind. So actually, it's not always because that category isn't relevant. If I consider something like watching the movies at home, and I'm not talking the cinema, but I'm talking those sleepovers I had with my girlfriends when I was a teenager, to the family film nights we have now snuggled up on our sofas. Okay, as a child, I might have had to troop down to a video shop and choose the film off a shelf, and now I can download it, but it didn't need to be the case that it was with Blockbusters, and it is, of course, now with Netflix and Amazon Prime. I'm sure my children are listening to as much music, if not more, than when I was a child. Maybe I had to tape it off, my, off the radio, and a bit panicky if in the middle it changed the tape, had to be turned around. But of course, those brands like R Price and HMV are no longer how we're listening to our music. And okay, so maybe these are, are categories where the digital revolution again has really impacted them. But if I take something else like even a yogurt, and I say, actually, the yogurt industry looks as if it's alive and well, just like it was when I was a child. If you go into a supermarket, you still see a plethora of yogurts, but no longer ski, like I did as a child. So there are brands that we liked, in fact. In fact, your reaction tells me that you now reminisce about those brands, but they're no longer with us. So why is that? Why do some brands manage to transition from one generation to the next and others don't? I believe there's a combination of three things at play at the moment. The first is that we've got product manufacture. That means that with globalization, we can now make products from a prototype to a product on a shelf very, very quickly, cheaply, and easily. And this combined with a complete change to the uh, route to market. You no longer have to have a chain of high street stores or uh, beg the buyers of a supermarket or a department store to pr put your product on their shelves, you can now place your unknown product, unknown brand, in an online marketplace, or even set up your own e-commerce shop, and you can be up and running quickly and easily. And it's these two things combined with the third thing, which is the access to advertising. No longer with TV being king, is this purely for the exclusive, big, rich brands that could advertise. Now we've leveled the playing field. So these small, unknown brands now have a chance to not only produce their product and put it on a shelf, but also get out to their market. And this has been a game changer. What it's caused is an unexpected uh, explosion in market pressure. I kind of imagine that maybe back in 1998, around that time, someone piped up in a board meeting in Cadbury somewhere. Uh, excuse me, do you think we should pay any attention to this little niche organic chocolate that's come up called Green and Blacks? I'd like to think that someone took that person seriously, but maybe someone laughed and went, we're Cadbury's. <laughs> only to find, not long later, that they were sharing every shelf in every supermarket with green and blacks. I've just started my Christmas shopping, which I'm quite pleased about for this year. And I don't know about many of you, but I'm going to be buying gin this year. I think a lot of people will be buying gin. It's just a bit a la mode this year. Um, but I have just as much chance that I'm going to be buying locally produced silent pool gin 
as I am, 248-year-old Gordon's brand, gin. And suddenly that 250 years almost of history to Gordon's has little to play for in terms of the future of Silent Pool versus Gordon's. So let's go back to breakfast for a moment. Is it really true that breakfast is completely un affected by this market pressure. Okay, the digital revolution hasn't hit the cereal aisle, but when I walk into these massive supermarkets that we have now and see uh, cereal for an entire aisle from floor to ceiling, gluten-free this, high fiber that, low sugar this, granola that, granola this, and actually that's before we even consider some of the little trends. I don't know if anyone had dalliance this year with avocado on toast. My mother would have looked at me like I was crazy if I'd have asked for that as a child. But of course, cereal has had that kind of pressure, just like all of the other categories. And you couldn't possibly tell me that Lego has not had market pressure. Forgetting all the online games, if you just took one brand that gave them a run for their money this generation, which was Minecraft, so, come on, kids, you don't need to physically build it with plastic. You can do it in the virtual world. How does a brand like Lego not just survive a generation, but shine, seriously shine? And so this is where I like to have a bit of fun. And I like to imagine the top execs of a brand like Lego marching up to Big Ben staring up at this towering change and saying, OK, so the kids today want to watch YouTube videos. Well, then we will bring Lego to life in YouTube videos. We will have Lego Ninjago, Lego Friends, Lego City. We will bring Lego to life and reimagine Lego for children of today. And if you're telling me that kids today really feel that the most relevant thing to them is these huge franchises like Star Wars and Harry Potter, well, then we will make Star Wars and Harry Potter Lego, and we will stay relevant. And if you're telling me that kids today have forgotten how to play, and they can't really see what, where their imagination is, then we'll make a movie that explains to kids and literally demonstrates to them how to play. And maybe in another boardroom further down the road, because obviously they're next door, the top execs of a brand like Marmite are also stomping up to Big Ben, and they're looking up, and they're saying, right, so it's not good enough anymore that we just sell our product. We have to have a two-way communication. We have to have social media. We have to have a community of fans. Well, this is a bit of a problem because there are some people that don't really like Marmite. In fact, they don't really like the smell of it. But what would happen if we just talked to everybody, whether you loved us or you hated us? And if you weren't sure, we'll get you to taste it and we'll tell you, DNA tell you, that you hate us. So this is fun, but I think these brands also walked back over Westminster Bridge and looked back at that towering change and did another important thing. They put it into context and they said, but let's just remember if we're Lego, our job is not to make YouTube videos of Lego. Our purpose as a brand is to inspire children to, to build and to imagine and create and that's actually our destination. The rest is part of the journey. What would have happened if blockbusters had walked back across Westminster Bridge? Would we be downloading our movies from them now? So I can't really imagine in the world of AI and VR what changes my children are going to be reflecting on in 40 years' time. I literally cannot imagine but I do like to think I might leave them a bit of a legacy. And whether they like it or not, I'd like to think of them in their houses with their children in a few years' time saying, sit up straight. Don't, don't scrape your feet on the floor. What do we say? Yes, you may get down from the table. Hang it up. You weren't born in a barn. And I will leave my legacy like that. Change is human. Thank you.